you're wondering what the latest trend in public relations is right now, it's an app called Clubhouse. It's a place where you can hang out with the who's who of entrepreneurs and digital marketers and more, including the Grant Cardones and Anthony Robbins of the world, and also my guest today. Welcome to another episode of Social PR Secrets. Today's guest is Dennis Yu. Dennis is a legend when it comes to digital marketing, and we go way back. We tried to actually figure out how many years we've known each other. It's been maybe 12 or 13 years. If you don't know Dennis, he's known for everything from Facebook advertising to Snapchat advertising, but he is especially known when it comes to optimization, when it comes to both organic and paid marketing. In today's episode, Dennis and I talk about the latest trend in audio experiences, Clubhouse. Like when any new social network launches, there's a lot of connecting going on and it's always the best in the early stages, so jump on. Dennis shares with us some of his social PR secrets when it comes to joining Clubhouse and what to do first and how to get the most out of it. We also talk about really fun things like the the trends happening right now in 2021 when it comes to social media. And believe it or not, Dennis considers old school SEO to be one of the latest trends this year. I could not agree more. Welcome my good friend, Dennis Yu, who always comes ready to share and giving us all of the latest tips and tricks when it comes to the SEO link juice and even Clubhouse. Hey everybody, and welcome to another episode of Social PR Secrets. My name is Lisa Beyer and I have Dennis Yu here. Yay. Hey Lisa. How long have we known each other? You guess. I'm I'm going to say 12 years. I think it's 12 or 13. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's um, it's crazy. And we were just chatting before we went live on how, how we haven't really seen each other in person, probably for sure more than a year, right? Yeah. yeah, mainly at the conferences where I get to hear Lisa speak about PR and social. Yes, and I get and to teach hear... for, for her kids at USF and other places. Yes, I, yeah. So I'm not teaching that class anymore, but I am going to be launching an online course to professionals. So stay tuned for that one. Mm. But um, Dennis, I'm so glad that we're here. And we were originally going to talk about something that's like not that new, but instead we're going to talk about <laughs> Clubhouse. Yes. And that's actually, we just were kind of interacting and I saw you on mm. Clubhouse and you, you, you let me in. Um, mm-hmm. So what, for those that don't know what Clubhouse is, what's your version of it? It is a place for people to be public speakers. And especially with COVID as the perfect storm where people can't travel and speak at conferences, you have people that want to speak to talk on a topic because they're militant about certain issues or they want to build their personal brand. So you have a lot of these author speaker coaches as so literally if we scroll right now in my clubhouse, let's look at the topics of the rooms. Okay. So look, here's club. Can you see my screen? Okay. Yeah. Right. Yep. Let's look at the first one, the power of social media with Dan Fleshman and these other folks. That's been going for the past few hours. I, I, yeah. Yeah. All night. How we make money and build following on Clubhouse. I'm surprised there's not a ton more millionaire. Oh, here it is. Advice from seven, eight, nine figure millionaires. Mm-hmm. See what Women else entrepreneurs. We yep. Here it is. 29 laws to a seven figure e-commerce business. Literally, this is live. I'm not making this up. We're scrolling yeah. through and yep. seeing what these are. Here it is. Need money. Come practice your pitch on millionaires. Millionaire this, million. OG syndicate CEOs helping entrepreneurs. So it's very much this imagine if there was a stage and anyone could come on it and hop on the mic and speak in front of thousands of people, what kind of people would that attract? Everybody that wants to be successful. And that's what you see happening on clubhouse, which because it's in beta and it's on iPhone only, there are only a million people it's invite only the initial people on the platform were true a list celebrities, which then it was so smart at the clubhouse people to then attract other people because of FOMO. And I found myself sucked in because Michael Stelzner pinged me. He's the mm-hmm. founder of Social Media Examiner. He said, Dennis, you need to be on this platform. And I thought, I don't have time for another platform. I'm already busy with Google and Facebook. Plus I have a life, I have an agency, I have people that I need to spend time with in the real world. I don't have time to hang out on Clubhouse. Plus it's audio only. And I don't, well, I have a, I have a face made for radio. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, the, the idea of not being able to record, so it's not a podcast, It's kind of weird because I like to produce content like our time together, Lisa, is commemorated because I know it's being recorded. So other people that want to learn about Clubhouse later or whatever topic we're talking about, like Facebook ads, they can. But the idea of disappearing audio is kind of an extension of disappearing video, disappearing story. So think of it as like a live 
real-time audio or radio show where people can jump in and listen, or maybe even, you know, it's like a talk show where they bring in guests, you know, the like late night things where they build, they bring in people and they have relationship questions or whatever. It's kind of like that, but around all these other topics, which are in rooms, and then the rooms are increasingly going to be part of clubs and clubs as a features that, as of now, January, 2020, that they're just starting to build out. So I'm excited to see what happens. I've built some incredible connections. Yes, I can that, tell. That I have either I've, I've known who they are, but I didn't really know them very well. Like Dan Henry, and you could love him or hate him. And we've known each other for, you know, we've had some arguments on the internet kind of for fun. But then he dropped into my room a few days ago and he stayed for 90 minutes and he and I were just going back and forth and I was asking him questions. And originally we were talking about Facebook, but I thought, ah, this guy's here. I'm just going to go ahead and I, whatever, 150 people, 200 people in my room. And I just started asking him all these questions about how he sells courses, about how he manages his life, about how he prices things about, and it was the most real, authentic, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, you know, give me your very best knowledge kind of thing. And it was weird because it, I was interviewing Dan in front of, at that point, it was 200 people. And then Michael Stelzner popped in. And then I asked him some questions. And then the number one dentist in digital marketing, Glenn Vo, came in. Then I asked him for his thoughts. And then the number one personal injury attorney in digital marketing, Ali Awad, who's got millions and millions of views on his viral videos. He came in and I started asking him questions. And so these people started coming into this room. And this, granted, this is the first room I had ever done on Clubhouse. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't understand what Clubhouse was. I had no idea how to use. I didn't realize, for example, that when you log in and you see other people and they have a little party hat on them, that means they're new to the platform within the last week. I didn't know that you can invite people to your room. I didn't understand what the green little circle thing was, which means that you're a moderator. I didn't understand what the dynamics are on why you invite people to the room or how you invite speakers or when you kick them out. Or I, I didn't know any of this. And it's just so fascinating to see that me coming in with no experience except for Michael Stelzner saying, hey, you need to be on this platform. And, and me when, initially how long ago was that? Just to give it some context. 10 days, 14 days ago. Yeah. Really not. I mean, Actually, you know, my first Dan Clubhouse was January 1st. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because Michael Stelzner held a New Year's Day clubhouse room on social media trends for 2021. And he invited me as a speaker. So I thought, okay, I mean, there's no social media marketing world going on because of COVID. So why not? And I saw it was him and our other friends who speak at social media marketing world. So I'm like, okay. And to get my my butt up early, you know, for this thing. He likes to wake up early. And I had such a good time. And then after that, he said, you should, you should get on Clubhouse. And then he started coaching me through it. And I realized that Clubhouse is an incredible two-way way to communicate. So podcasts and things like this are recorded in advance. And other people, if you're listening now, you're listening after our conversation. But the, the, the dynamic, Lisa, of having real time interaction where other people can pop in and change the nature of the conversation is exciting because then it causes people to want to stay. It increases the FOMO, but it also creates risk. And since then, in the last 10 days, 14 days, I did one yesterday with my buddy, Mark Wagner. I think you met him. And we were talking, we were just having a conversation just like us here, like on Facebook Messenger or something. And we we're talking about hiring digital marketers and all the different issues that we're facing, like a really good discussion, just him and I. It wasn't a podcast. It was just him and I chatting on Facebook, right? Messenger audio, which is not as good as a real phone call, but whatever. And then he said, hey, this is such a good discussion we're having. We should just put this on Clubhouse. So I thought, okay, yeah, why not? I mean, we're not talking about anything sensitive. We're talking about who are the different roles we're hiring for and how we're hiring and you know what we're looking for and you know how we're going to try to find these people and screen them. And yeah, that would be useful for, I think, other people that want to hire people just like we are. So we did. And all of a sudden, 50 people flooded into the room within like a couple of minutes. I mean, can you imagine what it's? So it's not even like scheduling a Zoom. It's not like scheduling a webinar, right? right. These people just come in. Right? Yeah. And you just did it as a pop-up? Yeah. I mean, everything. Just, well, I, you can schedule a room. Yeah. But yeah. I found that, and I've seen other people schedule rooms and maybe if they have a list that they, they can invite people and all that, but it seems like the people who have the biggest rooms just, inv you know, they just create the room and based on how many followers you have, like apparently if you're a follower, not apparently, this is true. If, if you have people that follow you and then you join in in a room, then that can notify them. Oh, Lisa Beyer just joined the room on how you can become a millionaire or, you know, whatever it is, right? So the strategy, which is kind of gray hat SEO, is if you're in a room or you're trying to promote your room, 
try to ping other people who have lots and lots of followers to be in your room because then all of their people notice it and then your room gets bigger and then the more engagement you have and then you bring them in as moderators, which then causes them to want to stay, right? Because let's say, Lisa, you're, you're a moderator in a room that has 3,000 people and now Grant Cardone's in there and Tony Robbins is in there and these other people are in there. And meanwhile, your follower count's increasing because if you're a mod, all the other people in the room want to follow you, then you don't want to leave, right? Because you, you might have a chance to say something to Tony or Grant or Gary Vaynerchuk or these other sorts of people. So then it causes you to stay in there and it causes a self-reinforcing thing because I was in, I was a mod in one of those rooms with 3000 people. I was there. I, I don't know yeah. if I was, yeah, I was on that. Um, that was like 12 hours long, right? Yeah, it was. And the funny thing was that I only spoke two or three times for a minute each because I didn't want to take the air away from all these other people who are clearly super high profile, right? I'm just, whatever, a search engine guy, right? And just by being there in the room, I was gaining, I gained another 650 followers just in the first couple hours, just by being in the room, not by saying anything. I saw Russell Brunson was talking. I saw these other people were talking. And I noticed in that room of 3000, if you were a speaker, if you talked, if you actually spoke, you would all of a sudden get another 500 followers within like a minute. And I knew that because I went from like 2000 followers. No, I was no, I was like, I was 700 followers. And then I spoke for a minute on something that was actually knowledgeable because I was waiting for a question to come up that would fit something. I could say something knowledgeable about, right? Cause I'm like, oh no, I can't talk about any of these things. But then finally they asked a question about Facebook ads and other people like, oh, Dennis is a guy who can answer that question. I'm like, yes, I can answer that question. So I answered the question and then I watched and I gained another thousand followers in that room. Amazing. And that is, can you imagine like that's the crack for a speaker, right? If you're a speaker, you want to be known, you want more followers and imagine real time as you're speaking or when you're right, when you're done speaking, you go click on your profile and you see your follower account go up, you know, to 800, a thousand, 1200, 15, I'm at 4,200 now. That's amazing. And now I'm logging in just to look, even I don't have any time I'm logging. I'm like, oh, when I'm going to hit 5,000, I want to hit 5,000, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so everybody, if you're on Clubhouse, definitely follow Dennis Yu. Um, yeah, so I think I've been on now, it's been a week today that I've been on. And the first time I was actually listening was when I was doing the drive that I was telling you about today. Mm -hmm. I do a tour drive every Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my God, this is so awesome. And mm -hmm. in a way I was, because I was driving, I couldn't take notes. I, mean, I knew it wasn't being right. recorded. I'm like, okay, how am I going to remember this? This, you know, like little right. quotes or certain things that people said. And, you know, from that point forward, I was just kind of like going in and out of it. And I found myself mm -hmm. getting like sucked in, but in a good way. I mean, yeah. it reminded me a little bit of the early Facebook days when, because mm -hmm. I saw like Chris Winfield and, oh, you, know, yeah. you know, just people that, um, you know, were on Facebook in our industry mm -hmm. in the beginning and when it was small and nice and not mm -hmm. what it is today. So polluted. Um, mm -hmm. And it just, it was so like, genuine and organic and and real it wasn't smart like anything at the start before the marketers come in and wreck it yeah exactly <laughs> exactly and then um yeah and then on that saturday i started listening to it in the morning and i was on that same in the same room that you're that you were in mm -hmm. and I, I listened to it my whole way to yoga when i came out of yoga i put it on i listened to yeah. it like the entire day my whole drive yeah. home and it was like 12 hours and i'm like okay i have to get off but it was but why did you stay that that's what I want to know. Cause you, you, there are other things you could have done with your time. Well, a lot of the time I was driving and so I, okay. I just could do it. It was like more like background. Um, but then I found myself, you know, well, it was just a little bit like background and I, I wanted to be interactive, but, and I was like, kind of wanted to be like, yeah. you know, ask a question, but I wasn't yeah. in a position to. So, mm -hmm. um, it, it's been really, it, so in my PubCon session this morning, I basically said like audio is the new video, you know, like this is Isn't gonna be funny? the year of audio. Yeah. I mean, podcasting and, and Clubhouse. And, um, you know, I, at first I was like last year, like podcasting, like, is it really something? Mm -hmm. And it's right. it's huge. It, it audio, uh, the audio experience is like where it's at right now. So how Amen. can we use this? How can we use Clubhouse as part of our, our strategy? Like what are the strategies yep. that you think we should be doing right now? And then what are some tactics? I've seen mixed reviews on Clubhouse where people will slam it for the kind of sensationalism and hating and whatnot that go on. Just like people that get mad at Facebook because it's driven by who your friends are and who you follow and what you're trying to do, right? Your experience and my experience are different because of who we are and, and it's being reflected back. I think of Clubhouse as like a mirror. 
So the way to get value at a clubhouse is to have two things clear in your mind. One is, what do you want? Be very clear because you'll have an opportunity in these rooms where people will say, hey, do you have a question you need answered? Or if you're a moderator, what do you need from the audience? And I've said, hey, we're hiring a COO. We need someone who can manage our chiropractor business. We have 73 chiropractors. We're doing digital marketing according to a very set process and we have a bunch of VAs, but I don't wanna manage this business, right? I wanna spin up other agencies. I wanna build software. I need a COO who can run the whole thing. And that's attracted a lot of people who wanna apply because I know I made a very specific request not about, oh, I need help trying to make more money or my bills are high or I don't know much about running an agency. Like you, you can't ask something. You have to specifically know what it is that you want. If you ask that inside Clubhouse, you will not believe the level of support that you will get from people that you didn't even know that you didn't know and people who are just so willing to help you, which is weird. But I don't think it's going to last more than a few months. So if you need to, you need something, you should go in there while the environment's still good before it gets rotten. Then number two is think about what you can do to help because this is a great opportunity to be able to share your knowledge, to share a connection that you have, just like your friend who's selling their chiropractor business, right? You're making that kind of connection. Think about where you can provide value. And most people haven't really spent time to think about the thing they're really good at because they're trying to do everything, right? But think about what is that, that the thing that you do that you can, when people ask you who you are, you say, I help X achieve Y through Z right? Be very clear about the X, Y, Z. If you have those two things, what you want, and then what you can do for other people, you will see Clubhouse as a multiplier of your networking. If you want to try to sell, you're going to find Clubhouse to be a terrible place because Clubhouse is you. when you give value, you get attention and following back because there is no messaging inside Clubhouse, right? It's, and it's intentionally like that because they want people to actually participate in the audio. And then if you click on someone's profile, of course, you have the full bio that you can put in there and they give you two links to Twitter and Instagram. So if you pimp out your Twitter and Instagram, reflecting what it, those two things I mentioned, right? Who you are, like where you have that kind of expertise and how you can help and what you're looking for, then Clubhouse is ridiculous. The, num the number of networking connections and business deals and problem solving and just cool people I've met on Clubhouse has been ridiculous because Stelzner told me this, this is, by the way, the advice I'm giving you is not like something I decided just to make up when I was in the shower. Like this is what I have heard from other people who are succeeding on Clubhouse. Well, so basically what you're saying is you have to be strategic about the ask and the give. Yep. Right. And yeah. any ways that, you know, we talk about optimization all the time in other channels and SEO, yep. is there, are there any ways to optimize your bio more than the links um, or yeah. any, anything else with your image, with your profile yep. image? Yeah, Michael Sanchez is actually the best at this. And he's created this Clubhouse Secrets and TikTok Secrets. And he has a guide on how to do that. But in summary, your, your bio, you have the short bio, which is the first three lines that show up as you're scrolling through people. And then you have a long bio, which is everything else that you can put, mainly as bullet points and with emojis. Going into detail about why you're worth talking to, what your accomplishments are, who you know, where you've been featured, what you're looking for, and then your bio items. And if you put those, you know, who, where, what, how, when, why, you put that stuff in there and people, because what happens is if you say something interesting on Clubhouse, then people will click on your bio to see who you are. Because, like, oh, Lisa just said this really cool tip. And then they will decide as they're listening, but scrolling through your profile, is this someone I want to connect with? So think about what is it that you can say about your strategic ask and, and give? And I would say even like your Facebook and LinkedIn and website are important because you can't link directly to your website. So you'll see people do the arrow, arrow down and point at the website link. And then someone has to type in your website. So obviously you want to buy your name. You want to make sure your, your thing is easy to type. A lot of folks don't have websites, so you're missing an opportunity there. So I think this is really an indirect SEO play. Yeah, I just heard a stat this morning or yesterday that sixty seven there's only sixty seven percent of businesses have a website. Like, how is that possible? Yeah, that's we heard the same stat ten years ago. It's, and you would think, why is it funny? It hasn't changed. I think it's because the number of entrepreneurs has increased significantly in the five years. If you look at the people who have had businesses at least five years, then I think your the number goes up to about eighty five percent. But you're that, right, it's still at sixty seven percent because of all the solopreneurs. And people that have started becoming consultants or whatever, and they're on social media, but they've not, they've, they don't think the web is as important or they've never gotten there, right? Right. They're treating their, their social profiles like a website. 
Yeah. Their social pages. And so like they have website. no way of collecting information because it's all rented property. So mm -hmm. that's great. They have Instagram and they're able to do influencing and because that, you know, that's the number one job title, the number one profession that young adults want to be in, right? They've been surveyed, right? Do you want to be mm -hmm. a doctor, a firefighter, a policeman? Influencer is the number one. That's not even a job, but that's the <laughs> number one thing they put in there. And so they follow our buddy, Jake Paul. And so they have a YouTube channel. They have a Facebook. They have an Instagram. They do Twitter. They do Pinterest, Snapchat, TikTok. So they're so busy doing all that. Where's their time to build a website? Or a list. But what happens if you get banned on Twitter? What happens if Facebook changes right. their algorithm and all of a sudden your stuff now all of a sudden you got nothing so if you don't you're right Lisa. if you don't have that email list then if you don't have the website you could be hosed because you're basically renting and the landlord can kick you out yeah i feel like it's unbelievable clients that i'm working with and we're trying to um target influencers and we approach them mm. and they have a huge following and perfect yeah. engagement and no list no, no website, website no less it's and no business model no product no team no operations yeah. it's just them yeah yeah. But that's great for your clients because then you don't have to pay them very much because that means they don't have a business model. So they need the money. I know people who have millions of followers and they are broke driving for Lyft and DoorDash and these other sorts of, you know, making 10 bucks an hour because they have no business model yet. They can't convert the millions of followers into money because you're right. There's no sequence. There's no product. There's, you know, the mechanics of having a business. Yes. Yeah. Um, one other thing, the optimization for Clubhouse that I would recommend is when you first get on and you fill out your topics, um, mm -hmm. just to be super clear on your topics and not be too scattered so mm -hmm. that you're notified and you're, you're, you're focusing on the right things. Cause if you fill out tons of topics, yeah. then you're going to get, you know, you're going to get like basically everything. And do you really want that? Yeah. I think it's more important on who you follow in yeah. terms of people. The topics can give you something and being part of the clubs can certainly give you notifications, but I think follow the people you really trust. And it's the same dynamics on Facebook, right? The, the people you follow are what drive what's in your newsfeed. And that's what drives what you see on Clubhouse and the conversations you have. Yeah, that's so true. Same thing for how you participate in the rooms, because that also attracts followers to you. So every couple of days I come in and check who's following me and see, oh, these people are interesting, right? So you could, some people have kind of a follow unfollow follow strategy, which is what they do on Twitter and Instagram, where they just bulk follow a whole bunch of people. I don't recommend doing that. And Clubhouse also has a, a rate limiter. So they'll, they'll throttle how, I forgot how many people there's like a hundred per day or something like that. So you can't follow too many people. I noticed something that you're doing also, which I think is very smart, of course, is that you're sharing on Twitter that, you know, that you're on Clubhouse and you're yeah. doing a screenshot of how many followers you have. And I think you're doing yeah. it maybe on LinkedIn too. And so, you know, you need to, that's, that's very smart, but it's, it's basic, but a lot of people don't even think to do that. It works. The power of clubhouse is, I mean, there's stuff that you can build real time while you're building connections and sharing knowledge and all that, but an old school marketer like me, I want to bring people to my clubhouse and in my rooms. And when I've posted about it, people will come and I'll say, Hey everybody, what are you doing on Saturday at 1 PM? We're going to talk about what real estate agents need to know about Google my business, right? I and mean, we did that last weekend. We had 130 real estate agents show up. So it works. And then you bring, here's the other thing that I've, I've done. I haven't seen other people do. So when we're sharing our knowledge, and let's say that it's not your room, but you're answering a question or you're friends with one of the mods. So you're not trying to hijack the room like some people do. <laughs> and you share some kind of knowledge. And maybe the mod says, hey, how can people find out more about you? Just like you would ask in a podcast. What I've done is I'll say, send a note to operations at blitzmetrics.com with the subject line, we love Lisa Beyer. And I'll give you that course that we're talking about. I'll give you that particular asset. I'll give you whatever that thing is, that lead magnet. And I find that that works better than saying, go to my website, blah, 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 blah. And go to, go to the landing page. Like that doesn't work as well, but literally telling people to email you, I found works super well. That real estate one we did a couple of days ago, I think we got 30 emails from I mean, real estate probably agents. Su super high quality. Yeah. Cause we, the topic of the room that we created was on how do you get more leads from Google? How do you search better? You know, how do you SEO for real estate, Breckenridge, Colorado, real estate agent near me, you know, homes for sale, city name, right? How do we do that? So we talked about that for an hour and a half. And I said, you know, man, we've, we, you know, we've all had a good time, but there's so much more that we can talk about. If you would like our free guide, please send a note, say, uh, 
in the subject line, in this case, it's Jason Patana, who's well known in the real estate world. I always use, I use the subject line as a landing page, if that makes sense. Yeah. That's my tracking URL, mm -hmm. right? So when they say we love Jason Patana, then our VAs who answer the emails like, oh, okay, this must be real estate. So let's give this person the real estate thing. Cause then then the body, they say, give me the guide or free training, please. Right. right. And, then, and let, so we use the subject line. So if we're doing this thing about clubhouse, and let's just say for, for some reason, you know, we're talking about, you know, the South market or South Florida marketing trends, right. Or what's it like living in celebration, Florida. Right. <laughs> so then we would talk about this on clubhouse and we'd say, Hey, send a note with the, the line. We love celebration or we love Lisa Beyer. And we'll give you our guide on the cool things to do if you're near Disneyland and you live in celebration, you know, whatever it might be, right? So I've just found that mentioning someone's name anchors it to the conversation on the topic that we have. So that way, you, either your people or you know how to respond to the leads that come in. Yeah, that's brilliant, brilliant. Um, I mean, the one that I was on last Saturday, the 12 hour marathon one that was uh -huh. like the Grant Cardone and um, Chris Winfield and mm. you were on, you were one of the moderators. I mean, that, that was that the one that Anthony Robbins was on too? Oh, he's on a few of them. I don't think he was in that one, unless he popped I mean, in at one point. I didn't see him. I mean, the beauty of it is that when these guys come and do these, you know, masterminds, I mean, you, you're paying 10, 20,000 to be in the same room and mm -hmm. ask a question. Mm -hmm. And here on Clubhouse, you're basically getting that, that engagement and that interaction yeah. that you would never get anywhere else. Like even, even on oh, a radio yeah. show, like, it, you yep. know, radio shows are an hour or whatever. So it's, it's really an amazing opportunity to interact and engage with people that are just basically untouchable and, and especially oh, right now. And to talk to them and hear from them. Mm -hmm. I've probably been in 50 rooms that are 30 K plus masterminds. So for anyone else to have been in the same rooms, they would have have to have, to have paid $1.5 million. I get in because I'm a speaker, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you the level of knowledge that's being shared there is at the same level. And the connection making, it's oh, ridiculous. Yeah. I'm thinking, why would Grant Cardone share this sort of Cole, Cole Hatter, right? I'm in his masterminds I teach there. Why would he share that same kind of thing and level of knowledge? And I realized it's because each of these people are treating it as an opportunity to build their personal brand. So they're on stage. So they're not selling, but they're trying to, because they know that Clubhouse is growing and they know that there are a lot of influential people in the audience because it's still new and still beta that they're willing to put their very best out there. And that's so genius of Clubhouse. That's why if you're listening to this now, even if it's much later, right? It's mid 2021, it's still worth it to get in there because it's gonna be just like you said, Lisa, the early days of Facebook, it's still gonna be good for the initial part until eventually the masses ruin it. Once this thing gets to 20, 50 million people, it's gonna get ruined. So let's just look at the public relations angle at this, which is the way I looked at Facebook when Facebook first came out, this is an opportunity right to you know get publicity in a new way where you have control mm -hmm. and you have this captive audience that as long as like you said you are strategic mm -hmm. about who you follow mm -hmm. i mean you're getting in front of it's vice versa it happens you know it's it's for exactly. the grant cardones to get publicity but then for you yeah. to be in front of a grant cardone or somebody that you know it, it's it's an amazing pr opportunity what are your thoughts exactly. on that it is there is no better opportunity if you're clear about your strategic give and ask and you know how to speak clearly. Now you and I can take this for granted because we're public speakers that have spoken for years on various stages. But if you haven't and you're shy and your ability to speak impromptu is not so good and you have lots of ums and ahs, this is your opportunity to use Clubhouse's Toastmasters or go join Toastmasters. If I was Toastmasters, I would be all over this, right? Because if you are not able to communicate live in a group setting, if you've never moderated a panel, you and I have moderated many panels at conferences, right? There's yep. something to that. There's a skill that some of it, you could listen to Lisa and I talk about this, but some, some of it, you, you just have to practice. It's one of those things you just have to get in there and, and do it, right? Yeah, I actually like moderating now better than speaking. Some, you know, I, I like asking those questions and kind of like, pivoting the conversation from one topic to another when you, especially if you know the speakers and you know the audience yeah. and you're able to yeah. do that. Um, but I know that I wanna be very mindful of time and there's a couple of topics I wanna get to um, besides okay. Clubhouse, unless there's anything that we didn't, <laughs> if we didn't okay. mention or cover something on Clubhouse, uh -huh. let me know. Do, are okay. we good on Clubhouse? This is good. I just want okay. people to get in there and learn and see for themselves what we're talking about. And then you will be hooked on Crack House and yes. then when you do, I want to know, like comment below or message me on LinkedIn. I want to hear about your experience. 
Yes, for sure. Crack so, house. Crack house. Yes. <laughs> so you mentioned that your first day in Clubhouse was on January 1st and you were with um, Social Media Examiner talking about mm -hmm. 2021 trends. So since yeah. it wasn't recorded, we can't go back to that. Can you share what some of those um, top of mind 2021 trends were discussed? We're going to pivot back to old school SEO. I've spent a billion dollars with the B on Facebook ads. And for whatever reason, I think I've been pigeonholed or put into this thing as this Facebook person, this and that. But with all the turmoil that you see going on, and I don't need to tell you what the things are. You, we all know what those things are that are happening. There's so much risk and struggle and animosity and people being mad that we need to get back to the roots of owned properties. So I see there being a trend back to SEO and PPC, back to Google, because that's where the money's made. So social media, you're generating attention. But if you need to make money, you need to optimize for Google, which is not as sexy. And the irony is it's not an either or. It's not a great taste, less filling thing. Take the content that you've created and turn them into blog posts. So one of the techniques that I shared in Stelzner's panel was I took my very best Facebook posts. You've seen some of mine. They're actually like full on they are, blog yeah, posts. They are. They're long. Sometimes I wonder, if, is, did it originate as a blog post or did it start as a Facebook post? Because they're awesome. <laughs> actually, it's I'm, gone both ways. Right? Yeah, literally. I'll write here. I'll, 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 I'll answer it. So, you know, I'll, I'll write a note to a client or to a team member as an email. They'll ask a question in email and I'll write this long response. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is a really, I should turn this into a blog post, right? So I'll literally take that and copy it into a blog post. And lo and behold, it works well because I actually took the time to share some sort of knowledge or respond to a question. Or I'm responding to someone's question on Facebook or I had some thought and I go to Facebook and initially I'm just going to write like two sentences, but then I just get so caught up in it. I end up writing this long essay, right? Did that ever happen to you, right? Yes, yeah. And, and so then I'm like, oh, I should turn this into a blog post, or I can take this blog post. It's so good. I should make a Facebook post about it. Cause if you write a blog post, you can't just assume that the search engines are going to find it. If you're small, right. You need to then share it on Twitter, share the link out there. And then, so it just drives back and forth. And what I've, well, I didn't personally do, but I had one of our virtual assistants do is go through and find all of my top Facebook posts by engagement. So anything that's gotten more than a hundred likes, and has gotten some, and for you, that might be a different number depending on where you are and literally turn those into blog posts. Last month, just from that strategy, I didn't write any new content, literally just cross posting. I got 7,000 new visitors to my website just wow. from that, from Google search. What yes. do you think about that? I love it. And, you know, we didn't talk about this conversation before we started this, uh, this interview and you are, we're on the same page, like SEO and optimization, I think same are thing. critical, critical, especially right now. And so many mm -hmm. brands, big and small are out for the immediate gratification of the Facebook ad, um, you know, uh -huh. even Google ads, PPC, which it you disappears. Know, yeah. It, it doesn't last. One, once you stop, it's over game over. Let me, let me and, ask you a question mm -hmm. that everyone else in the audience should listen to as well. Think about too, as well. When you do a search on Google for something, imagine the last time you did a search for something, when was the last time you saw a Facebook post inside those search results on Google? I, I don't think I ever have. Yeah. Okay. And then let's say you're on Facebook and you're scrolling through the timeline. When was the last time you saw a blog post show up in there? I don't know not, when it's paid. So, <laughs> <laughs> so why not? Yeah. And, and it's because if you're working for Toyota, you're not going to drive in there with the Honda, right? Yeah. If you're working at the Honda place, you're not going to drive a Toyota. I mean, you, you know, you're just not going to do that. So when we're meeting with the Facebook folks at their headquarters and eating their food, they don't want to talk about Google. And when we're with Google, their cafeteria is not as good as Facebook's <laughs> is. Then they, they don't want to talk about the other guy, right? It's a Coke and Pepsi kind of thing. So here's the optimization. Any content you've produced on social is invisible to the search engine because they don't want to see it for obvious reasons, right? Because it's the competitor, right? <clears throat> so you just copy it over. So, so for example, you wouldn't take you, you would take your best Facebook videos, for example, and then you would put them into YouTube, which is Google, right? So now it's visible to Google and now you show up in search, you turn these things into blog posts. And what I see people doing, which I think is idiotic, but they don't know any better is on Facebook, they will share their YouTube oh my God. <laughs> video link. 
It's so and they don't annoying. understand why you can't do that, right? It's so annoying. I know that's come I, on. I, I mean, do you really way. want to piss off? Do you really want to poke the bear by doing that? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You really think Facebook wants to show YouTube videos big, and there's big thing? red, big red flag to Facebook when you do that. Yeah, you might as well just give them the give Facebook the middle finger, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> that's so, so true. So what you do is you upload everything natively. So if you're going to share it on Twitter, I know it takes an extra click, but upload it to Twitter and then share it because now it's a Twitter video. If you're going to share something, you know, put it on YouTube and up, you know, upload it as upload everything natively to that particular channel. So they're willing to favor it. Do not post on, on your blog and link to your Facebook post and Facebook video. That's just going to piss off Google. Right. Yeah. So literally that, that strategy in 2021 by cross posting, by leveraging what we call your greatest hits, which is stuff that's already performed in YouTube or performed in search or performed into or performed whatever performed in email right? Take your best email and turn those into blog posts. I yep. think that's the strategy for 2021. And that way, when there's a new social media channel, it doesn't matter. If Facebook were to go away, it doesn't matter because you've cross posted your stuff across all the channels. And then you're like, oh, I don't have enough time. Which channel should I focus on? That's the wrong question. Because you make your content and you push it across all the channels, right? Right, right. And how many brands do you interact with that? Let's whatever the budget is, let's say 100% of the budget, the smallest percentage, if any, is organic, is, is, oh. is focused on investing into the SEO and, or, and the organic side. I mean, I see so it's many times clients where it's small. like, yeah. Yeah. But, in but the, it's because paid gives, it's the crack, right? It gives right. you the immediate hit. I get it. Social gets you immediate hit. But when was the last time you engaged on a Twitter post that is more than a week old or a Facebook post that's more than a month old? Right. So why not get more juice out of it? Exactly, exactly. YouTube links last forever. Most of the traffic, except for this new thing that I just did, is from articles that I wrote, blog posts I wrote that are more than 10 years ago. I could stop blogging today and I would still get as much traffic as I've gotten all along. Well, a good example that, that actually I did this year during the pandemic is I launched my podcast, that Social Peer Secrets that we're on right now. And I was going to launch it with fresh interviews. And I was like, mm -hmm. you know what? I don't want to start with one. And right. I went back to a lot of my old interviews that we've done together on YouTube. Um, yeah. I mean, all diff they were scattered all over mm -hmm. the internet. I, I had my assistant go back and like find everything. We collected everything. I had 64 yeah. interviews. That's from amazing. The past that were and it's evergreen all content. And, and the stuff we're talking about is likely going to still be valid in five years from now. Yeah, for sure. So, I mean... Anybody could do that, you know, if yeah. they've been in business and they've been producing any type of content for the past five yeah. or 10 years, you can go back and do exactly what Dennis is saying. Um, Dennis, I have one more question I want to ask or topic actually, and that's on um, Snapchat advertising. Mm -hmm. So I know that you just launched a course. Tell us where, where is Snapchat when it comes to, where does it fit in and what are some of your, um, your tips that you can give us on that? I view Snapchat as the Bing of social media. <laughs> so you have to get your <laughs> Facebook that. right. They don't yeah. like that though. And full disclosure, we are a Snapchat ads partner. So they are paying us to build courses and to talk about how to make ads. But even though they're paying us, I don't think that we're biased because the strategy that works for Snapchat is the same that works on Facebook, Instagram stories, especially and TikTok, which is short form vertical video on your cell phone. And in Snapchat, everything's optimized optimized around the CPSU cost per swipe up. So it's not mm -hmm. the cost per click. It's like you're trying to get people to swipe up. So what you do is take anything that's worked for you, any kind of phrase, anyone who's familiar, any kind of copy, any kind of video that you've already made and cut that down into a six second clip. And then at the end, say swipe up. You literally on the video, you, ha you have your hands go like this, say swipe up to learn more, right? Mm -hmm. And that's all you're trying to get people to do is swipe up. One of my favorite te techniques, which is a little gray hat, is on Cameo, find someone who's important, like a Grant Cardone or whatever, and pay the $100 or $200 and get them to say something. And then at the end say, and swipe up to learn more. And then you can take the little part where they say swipe up and you can put other things, you can mix and match between other pieces of content that you have. And yeah, it works oh, really, really well. Yeah, I love that. And um, actually that was one of, similar, I heard something on, um on Clubhouse when I was listening to it and it was one of the social media rooms and they were talking about um, along the lines of TikTok content working really well on Instagram and Facebook. 
Oh, yeah. you can recycle between all of them because yeah. it's all vertical video. It's all entertainment. However, TikTok has a $20 daily budget. So you can manual bid. So you're not going to spend the 20. Your average CPMs for the ad people out there are going to be about $4, which is great because it's a half to a third the price of Facebook, maybe even a fifth the price of Facebook because it's still so new. Don't worry about the Chinese bite dance thing. You can only target down to the state level in the US. You cannot go to the, the geo with the zip and the draw the circle that you can't do that. Snapchat, you can. You can go down a lot. Uh, not as granular as Google, but pretty far down. So if you're a local service business, you're a plumber, doctor, dentist, attorney, florist, restaurant, one of those ones, you will find value on Snapchat. Even if you're serving senior citizens or whatnot, because you can still age target. The key is I think Snapchat, if they can grow their traffic, will be killer in local advertising what? because ultimately local advertising is not about sophisticated marketing. You're just trying to do better than the other dentist, than the other florist, than the other emergency repairman, locksmith, whatever, right? You're just trying to do better than the other. And, and that other, the other people in your category, you know, the, the personal injury attorney in Las Vegas is not going to, the odds are they're not going to know how to do stuff. So if you merely just at Snapchat, our average CPMs are probably a buck 30. And for those, for those people that do ads, that's cheap, right? So you can blanket a city and have viral content. And that way, next, next time someone, you know, they, their toilet's broken, they'll remember you because you're the plumber. Next time, you know, you get in a car accident, this is the, you know, next that it's better than billboards. It's better yeah. than offline media because it's so cheap. And if you, if you have engaging video content, you will dominate. And the odds of the other competitors in your area being able to make vertical video and say swipe up is super low. So we're launching campaigns for, I know you're going to remember this name, La Gondola, my sister and, uh -huh. and Andy's restaurant in Chicago. And yeah, I think it's going to be a super exciting opportunity and something different you know, than, than what Facebook advertising is available right now. Like it's just yeah. a little bit burned out. It's yeah. expensive. And I think Snapchat is going to be, it, it's an alternative to Facebook that I think a lot of small businesses and local businesses don't really consider. Yeah. And they've copied Facebook's ads manager. So the way you upload everything, the way you structure campaigns is the same thing. And TikTok, they've literally, they told me they literally copied the way Facebook does it to make it very easy for you to copy your campaigns over. Right. Because everybody's familiar with the Facebook ad manager. So exactly. they're making it Why easy make as possible. new thing for people to get confused on. Ex right. Well, Dennis, I want to be mindful of your time. So tell us, is there, are there any events, any follows, any, any, um, courses that you want to talk about or tell our followers to go to and invite them to look up digital CEO on YouTube. That's where we're sharing our expertise and you're going to see long form content and short form content, everything to do around running a business of that has digital marketing. So if you want that, we have tips on the nitty gritty on SEO and PPC and all that. But what I find missing is teaching people the business of, of digital, which is hiring people to do your digital marketing work. So the stuff that we talked about, Lisa, like cross posting, for example, we know it works, but almost nobody's doing it. Right. And the reason why is because they just don't have the time and they need to have a, a virtual assistant do that. So in our training, we show how do you find and hire a VA to get back three hours a day of your time for $500 a month, full time, someone working for you. How do you do that? Right. That is in the area of being a digital CEO. So follow me on the digital CEO channel. My co-founder Tristan Parmley is there too. And we're talking about it from a business standpoint. And if any of you guys have a business tip on how to maximize digital, then we would love to hear about that. Awesome. Thank you, Dennis. We didn't even get into your background or your journey, but <laughs> I mean, it's just, I'm going to put it all in the, in the show notes, but you're like a legend and I, I feel so good talking to you and catching up uh, that we have to do this more often for sure. Let's do it. Collaborate this year on more projects like we're doing with Snapchat. And I'm so happy you introduced me to the course and got me. Let's raise you on C let, let, let's raise up your SEO and then everyone else can follow that. Let's get back to the old school, right? Old school. Most people don't know that they think of me like some Facebook person, but let like, if you want to introduce me, introduce me as the guy who built the analytics at Yahoo, the search engine 20 years ago. Yeah. And the search is coming back, you know, bell bottoms are coming back, right? Exactly. Yeah. And you know what, if we did a word cloud of this episode, Facebook would not be the dominant word. And I'm happy about no. that. Yeah. All right. Well, Thank namaste, so much, Dennis. Thank you.
Thank you for listening to this episode of Social PR Secrets. If you like what you heard, check out the book on Amazon or follow our blog at socialprsecrets.com. This episode was sponsored by The Buyer Group, a social PR agency striving to keep our balance in the digital world, practicing public relations, social media, and search marketing, while occasionally drinking a glass of wine or two for the best creativity and results. Thank you all for tuning in. If you would like to get a free chapter of Social PR Secrets, go to socialprsecrets.com slash free.